Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Redstone video and in this one we're going to be taking a look at the self-building nether portal. Now the other day I was messing about in my Redstone testing world and I came up with this silly and slightly ridiculous idea that I would like to build a nether portal at the press of a button. Now of course this is pretty much pointless but the last time I had an idea like this it was the crowd goes wild machine and all of you seem to really like that thing, I'll put a link to that video down in the description and also on the screen but I thought you know what, let's give it a go, see what I can come up with and this is what I've managed to do. So the first thing that I've done is I've removed the nether portal from inside the frame. So there is no obsidian in here and there certainly isn't any nether portal stuff going on. In fact, you know what, I'm going to head inside and prove that there is no funny business happening here. As you can see, there is absolutely nothing inside this cage. But when we head up to the top and hit this button, as you can see, water and lava is dispensed and we have got ourselves a nether portal frame. Then when we stand on this pressure plate right here, that will light up the nether portal and there we go. We have straight away been transported right the way through into the nether dimension and that is everything completed. So how on earth does this entire machine work? Well, the first thing that I'm going to explain is how I got myself some obsidian because if anyone's out there watching this without ever playing Minecraft before or perhaps you're just really, really new to the game, for those of you who don't know, if we place lava and then some water on top, as you can see, we end up with this obsidian block. Now, of course, this is what makes up the entirety of the outside frame of the nether portal, which makes life nice and easy in terms of generating these things. So basically what I do is I dispense lava from these dispensers here and these dispensers down at the bottom at the same time. That does the top and the bottom of the nether portal. And then the side parts are a tiny bit more complicated because we have to do those in a sequence. Of course, if we generated the top obsidian first, then the water wouldn't make it down to the bottom and we wouldn't end up with any side parts. So what I do is I go from the bottom up to the top. So we have a dispenser behind this piece of obsidian here, which dispenses the lava. And then this one dispenses out into this block. Then this one dispenses out into that block. And there we go. We've got our side sections and that creates our nether portal. Now that entire process only takes four ticks, which is really quite impressive. Now, if we just take a look around the back, you can see all of the redstone that is controlling all of the timing circuits that I just explained. So over the top here, we have got the orange circuit that controls the water pulsing. That is where all of the water flows down on top of all the lava. And then the blue does the top and the bottom. The green does the side circuits. You can see that that is the sequence there, bottom. And then we have the middle one there, which powers this dispenser. Then the top one, which is four ticks, which powers the top dispenser. And then this little block here was originally going to be powering the flint and steel. I thought I would leave it in because sadly I couldn't get that to work within this redstone footprint. So instead I had to opt for a slightly different mechanism with these pressure plates out the front. But that works fine for me even if it does involve using a fire charge. But as mentioned before, this is a silly redstone contraption, so it doesn't really matter about the redstone resources required. Despite me referring to this build as a little bit silly throughout the entire video, I just want to mention that I'm a massive fan. I think it's absolutely awesome. It was really fun to work with, and it prevented quite a few challenges that I've never really had to deal with with redstone before, so that was really quite exciting. But one thing that I do just want to say is I think this thing is cool, and the self-building nether portal is an awesome idea, but I think the self-building nether cube would be even cooler. You know where you have the nether portals in the cube formation? That would be amazing. If you could get one of those to build itself, I would absolutely love you. So head off to your redstone testing worlds, get building, get designing, and then if you manage to create one, send it to me via Twitter. I can't wait to check it out. So there we go, guys. That rounds up today's video. I really do hope that you've enjoyed it. As always, there is a world download down in the description for anyone that wants to check that out. And also, if you feel like you haven't quite had enough nether portal action just yet, then I'll put a link to my recent video on toggleable nether cubes down in the description as well. But unfortunately, that's all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.